Hi, I'm Dan Guerra, and I'm giving you a lecture today coming from Vered Med, which we'll talk about later in this short PowerPoint. Let's get started right into it. Today, I'd like to talk to you about testosterone supplements in males. It's going to be a brief discussion of the published literature. Uh, some of the papers most recent, uh, you'll be able to see the citations as we get to the, towards the end. <clears throat> what do we know about serum testosterone? The big thing is that we know that concentration decreases as men age. That raises question in terms of aging process, whether or not that is related to muscle mass loss, cognitive decline, physical stamina decline, energy decline, reproductive decline, and indeed sexual performance decline. What is testosterone? It's an androgen. It's produced in the testes and the adrenals in men, and, it, it, and it's, all, it's effectively a steroid hormone. So male steroid hormones are those androgens. What do androgens do? They regulate sexual differentiation in males. They also generate secondary sex characteristics and are likely involved in certain sexual behaviors. Both ovaries and testes do produce androgens, but the latter, that is the testes, produce far more. So they're more likely going to be called male sex hormones. All steroids are actually formed from cholesterol, and the most common androgen in humans is testosterone, which you see there, the structure. Here again is the structure at the top. You see how it's very similar to the female steroid, uh, beta estradiol, and somewhat similar to progesterone, which is the structure at the bottom. This paper today is from the New England Journal of Medicine. You see the citation there. It's about a year old. It involves the treatment of elderly men with testosterone for three clinical endpoints, sexual function, physical function, and vitality function. Enrolled participants were pre-screened so that they were healthy, and the eligibility criteria is they had to be over 65 years of age, and they had to have serum testosterone levels that were very low, that means averaging less than 279 nanogram per deciliter. The trial involved the use of androgel, which is a substance that provide directly testosterone. Initial dose was five grams daily. It would be adjusted as, as this uh, study goes on. There was a placebo, a gel which had the same characteristics, but which did not have testosterone. <clears throat> they measured serum testosterone levels throughout the study, which lasted over nine months. And the dose of testosterone was adjusted so that they could hike up the serum testosterone levels to men normally between the ages of 14 and 40. This is the data summarized, is directly from the paper. Top graph shows you that there was an increase in sexual activity uh, as reported by the male subjects. There were about 275 people involved in the study. Um, the middle graph shows you that there was no real difference in physical performance, and the lower graph also in energy or stamina. So this long-term testosterone study, the only positive effect it had on the three outcomes, the three endpoints, was a uh, reported increase in sexual activity. <clears throat> Other studies um, say different things, so let's take a look at them. This, you can see the citation there. This paper was talking about testosterone supplementation and looking at glucocorticoids and bone homeostasis because actually androgens do help regulate bone mineralization like vitamin D does. This paper showed a positive effect with testosterone, but it needs follow-up. That's only one paper. You can see it was very re recently published. Next uh, paper was looking at a substance an extract from Fengu Creek seed extract. Uh, they looked at elevated testosterone, serum profiles, alertness, and cardiovascular health. They looked at a whole range of things. And they claimed that this seed extract actually improved all of those parameters. But let's put a big warning on that paper. Um, there was a huge design flaw in the experiment that as it was not a uh, randomized controlled trial where it was double-blinded, so people knew they were getting the supplement, and there was also potential bias because the authors were from a company that was selling the seed extract. You have to be careful of that. <clears throat> Third paper, quickly, uh, was looking at testosterone replacement in infertile men. This is a specific subgroup of people that are actually infertile, so they're younger. 
They didn't use direct testosterone treatment, uh, but they did a couple of other things. They inhibited estrogen receptors, and they also inhibited aromatase, which is the enzyme which converts testosterone to estradiol. And by doing that, they say they, uh, they boosted endogenous T, that is testosterone, and they restored fertility in some, in some of the male subjects. That, once again, will need follow-up to be able to determine whether or not that's across a lot broader range of people. Next paper looked at testosterone supplement in older men for up to three years, and that yielded a modest improvement in muscle mass and power. Very modest, statistically significant, but other than that, very modest. And again, that needs follow-up. Final paper was a BMJ paper. It was review, published last year. And it's a, it looked at testosterone supplementation for low T, and they say that it's not supported by the evidence, and that's what their review concluded. Again, this paper needs to be carefully analyzed and reviewed uh, by the reader to be able to know whether or not their uh, decision on what uh, the um, meta-analysis proved was indeed the testosterone did not seem to have uh, any good effect uh, for um, uh, any of the endpoints that we look at for testosterone. Um, my email address is shown there and website. And what we do uh, uh, is that we are scientists with a PhD in PharmD. And what we do is we verify published evidence in medical biosciences. So I hope to come to you again soon. And thank you very much for your attention.